talking about longevity here at the first place. Why are we worried about longevity? I mean, as a human race, is there an evolutionary angle for us to live long? I mean, our lifespan has more or less stayed constant. People say, why are we, we don't live like tortoise for 200 plus years, right? So if you think about human being is a very interesting species. It's not the strongest, right? If you look around, there are species which are stronger. It's definitely not the fastest. So that means from an evolutionary angle, survival of human being is actually a miracle which we survive because of our brains, but also because we are resilient. We could figure out that there could be no food tomorrow or there could be abundance of food tomorrow. So we went through this cycle of starvation and rich diet. And I'm going to, I'll tell you where I'm going to come ultimately. You might like that aspect. But if you go by this resilience cycle, that means over the selection of human as a race or a species, we were selected for genes which makes us resilient, which means we were trained to undergo cycling of nutrition to maximize our survival. That also means that we were not trained to have abundant food. So ultimately we're coming out that this abundance of food which we currently are facing, basically we are starved of, uh, fought of starvation and nutrition paucity. We are fought of all the infectious disease the only next big hurdle for us is living longer. And from that angle, we're coming back to the same aspect, that how does our body utilize this abundance of nutrition? So it's all about metabolic health. And that's what longevity in the long term for all of us is going to be, that how we manage our metabolic health. So where is the wonderful drug, molecule, gene therapy is going to come from? It's going to come from a simple idea that what can we do to improve your metabolism? And metabolism means how do we use available resources, resilient usage of resources. We were not trained to use this much sugar. Actually, nature is a very interesting design of things. It makes things which we need in enough quantity easily available. Those which do not need enough quantity makes them more sparse or difficult to get by. So if you look around you, wheat, rice, which are our staple diets, actually are so difficult to extract from the plant because you need to dehusk, you need to remove, you have to powder and everything. Whereas the fruits and vegetables are easily accessible. So now if you think very carefully, what we are doing is we are consuming which nature does not design us to consume more, which is making us undergo that metabolic shift or transition from fight to survive, now to eat, to live. That's what's happening. So where is the therapy going to come from? I think every molecule which we have talked about, metformin, rapamycin, or resveratrol, every molecule hits upon a central metabolic axis in our body. How do you use our sugar or calories in your body? How much protein, fat, carbohydrate do you need to consume to stay fit or live long is going to affect you. So in our fundamental research which we do, as we said, we have a great team. Somebody is looking at ovarian health, somebody is looking at pancreatic health we look at lung health, there's only one feature which actually improves quality of that organ, just give them less sugar. So basically caloric restriction is only known evidence, I think the people here will agree, that only known evidence of living long is restricted calorie. But I've also been told by a lot of people, I mean on a passing by, that no fun living that way. So I think longevity is battling fun and it's not gonna be easy. But from a gene therapy perspective, we are far away from that. The reason being, there are so many genes in our body which are geared towards resilience, making us a better human being. So to removing one or improving one gene function is not going to be a simple solution. So improving quality of life, health span, is going to be a multifactorial process. It would involve improving your lifestyle, improving your nutritional uptake, and also giving support for what is missing in your body. So I think that's where a lot of our fundamental research is also aimed at.